Okay, so you got a CNC for your shop and you decided on the Next Wave Shark HD series, either the HD 500, the 510, or the 520, and now you want to get it set up so you can actually start using it. Maybe I can help you with that. Stay tuned. Hi guys. For those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs and welcome to the official, unofficial first video of the Tech in the Shop series. Um, the actual official first video will hopefully be the next one where I talk about Tech in the Shop and what it means, that kind of thing. Um, this video is specifically for how to set up the Next Wave Shark CNC, specifically the HD series, the HD 500, 510, or 520. And I have the HD 520 and there's a lot of thought that went behind that decision, and I'll talk about that in another video. But if, if you're having trouble getting started, getting this thing set up, and you wanna get it using, hopefully this video can help you out a little bit. One thing I did wanna talk about is Next Wave recently updated their owner's manual. Um, it's a major upgrade from the previous manuals. There's some steps in here that even I didn't know about because they weren't in the previous manual. I think they're actually things that they changed since the release of the old manual. Um, and they have, it has color photos and they have three different projects in the back that you can get started on um, to help you get started. One is the little tool holder, another one is a cutting board, and then a carved trivet. And they're really neat little projects. And if, if, if you've got the Next Wave CNC or you're going to get the Next Wave CNC and you've got this manual, I definitely would check out those three projects. They, they really help you get started and how to figure out the software and how to make it actually work. Uh, if you don't have this manual, I'm sure you can call their customer support and they'll be more than happy to send you one. Um, if you don't have a Next Wave CNC, um, this video may help you out anyway. There may be some tips in here that can help you on your CNC, getting your CNC set up. I know a lot of the steps are going to be very similar. So, yeah, hopefully I can get you going a little bit faster with this. So, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, if you don't know who that guy is, that is Scott Weiner of crafty wiener if you haven't seen his channel you should go check it out there'll be a link on the screen somewhere so yeah as you can see the gantry comes fully assembled and this is the part where you really need an extra set of hands so if you don't have a wiener in your shop you may want to get one just to help you out with this part you probably can't recognize from the video where i'm at um james king of king's fine woodworking i know most of you probably know him um he recently upgraded his Shark HD4 Extended to an HD520, and he asked me to come up and set it up for him, and told me to, he actually told me to film it and put it on the channel for you guys. So here we are. So yeah, it, you're gonna need 12 screws, six on each side, and you're gonna attach it to the Y spar in the bed of the machine with six screws on either side, and you're gonna use three holes. Now, most people will set it for the top three holes. James wanted his a little bit taller, so we set it in the bottom three holes. And yeah, you'll need a hex driver and a 7 16th inch wrench and some muscle, like, you know, photo bomber, Psy. Um, and yeah, you just need some help to get it set up and you get the bolts put in and then get the nuts put on and tighten it down. So you want to make sure you have the cable pulled to the outside of the machine and that's for a couple reasons. One, you don't want it to get pinched on the Y spar, but you also don't want you also want to have it over there so that when you go to run the cabling it makes it a little bit easier to do that. But anyway, like I said, you're gonna put the screws in and you can see Scott's having a little bit of trouble getting that one in over there. And once you have a couple of them in, you can actually let go of the gantry. Just don't move it around a whole lot. And the, the bolts will actually support it until you can get everything tightened up. I mean, the tolerances on this thing are so tight that it's sometimes, as Scott, as you're seeing, Scott's having difficulty. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get them in and you need a, little, a nut driver or something like that to actually get them to push through. Okay, so once you have all 12 bolts in, then you wanna tighten up, you wanna get the nuts on there and then tighten them up. And so this is where the 7 16th inch wrench comes in. So yeah, you just get them tight. And, sure you guys don't need me to explain how to do that but it's fairly straightforward yeah quite simple actually so the next step is you want to install the cable carrier in order to make it easier to do it before you actually install it you want to pop these tabs loose 
Now, this is one of the differences in the new manual versus the old manual. The new manual actually shows you a step to take three of them out, and that comes in handy for a reason later on. So once you've got them all popped open, the next thing you want to do is you want to actually attach the cable carrier to the Y-spar. And you've got one end, you've got a bolt over there, and there's a hole that goes through the Y-spar on the left-hand side of the machine as you're facing it, and the cable carrier attaches there. And then from there, once you have that tightened down, you will slide the T-nuts, and I'll show those to you in just a second, onto the bed of the, bed of the machine itself. So before you actually slide the T-nuts in, you want to remove the front trim piece on that side. There's two pieces, two trim pieces on the wider machines like this, and there's one on the left and the right. You want to remove the one on the left. And the manual says to just kind of pull it back a little bit, loosen up that first screw and pull it back. But the double-sided tape that they put on these things is a little bit strong, so I found it a little bit easier to actually just take the whole thing off and then put it back on when you're done. So now these are the T nuts I was talking about. There's two T nuts, one about a third of the way down the cable carrier and one on the end of the cable carrier. Make sure you don't attach this end to your Y spar because you need to put this right here. And you'll, yeah, you'll just loosen them up and there's two access holes in the side of the cable carrier. I'll show this to you in just a second. Um, you loosen them up, slide them in, and then tighten them down. And right here you can see those two access holes to be able to get to the screws to be able to tighten up the T-nuts. And now you're ready to put the trim piece back on. And those of you that actually see what's going on here, shh, don't say a word. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to put the trim piece back on, but you want to make sure you're putting it on the correct way. If you don't notice, it's upside down. So I actually have to flip it over and put it on the right way after I get it on. Except you put that on upside down. And yes, I said we there because there's three other woodworkers in here and all three of them let me do that. The right way. Yeah, right. So now it's time to install or run your cables in the cable carrier. And this is exactly why you wanted to pop those tabs loose before you installed the cable carrier. The way it curves around itself right there, having them already pop makes it a whole lot easier than trying to pop them right now while the cable carrier is installed. Just a lot easier. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to run the cable through there and you're going to snap a couple of them down. You want to run it under the cable carrier behind the gantry, atop of the Weiss bar, and then you want to kind of get it snugged in there a little bit, snap in the first two or three, then just kind of go down the whole cable carrier and getting it snug in there and snap down the tabs as you go. Okay, so the next step is to install your spindle or router. And I'm not going to go into the details. James got the three horsepower spindle, which is something new that Next Web came out with, I believe, this year or the end of last year. Um, he got the three horsepower spindle. I'm not going to go into that because I recently upgraded from the two horsepower to the three horsepower, and I'm going to do a separate video on how to actually set that up. But you want to get your router installed. And if you're using a router, you don't need to remove this clamp. This clamp, that clamp is for the router. Then spindles come with a clamp to be able to hold them in place so if you're using the spindle you would need to replace that clamp but if you're using a router you don't need to do that but essentially the installation is very very similar um, you're going to slide the router or spindle into the clamp to hold it in place and you'll tighten up the four bolts to be able to hold it tightly in there typically you want to put it about halfway down or just basically put it wherever you feel comfortable as long as you're you have enough room to be able to get the bit in there and you have enough clearance for it to run around and not hit anything. 
and then you'll connect your cables and or any water lines you may have if you have a spindle and you're good to go pretty much if you're going the router route and you have one like this like the dewalt dw618 or one that has this cable coming out the side of it like this and it's stiff over here you want to make sure you put it in similar to this you can see how it's kind of angled out from the gantry you don't want it to be turned to where this is going straight this way straight this way because i didn't pay any attention to that when i first put the router in and this caught on the gantry over there and would not let the x axis go all the way over and so i wound up going over and over again on the same line basically it completely threw everything off and yeah just make sure you don't make that mistake next you want to connect all your cables um they'd actually label all of them uh x y and z and so you plug them in to you plug X into X, Y into Y, Z into Z, so forth and so on. And you have two homing plugs, the RC, the little white RCA cables that you see there. Um, those, you've, you've got two jacks for those to go into. It doesn't really matter which one of those you put into, put those into. You can it, either one works just fine. Um, but you're going to connect your X, Y, and Z cables, and then you're going to connect your power cable. Then you want to make sure that your control or control box underneath the machine and out of the way. And they send you a, a large control cable management tube. So you want to take the two sets of cables that are coming out of the front end of the machine, wrap the cable management tube around them, and then they send two, some zip ties to be able to close it up and actually attach it to the cable carrier. And that keeps your cables out of the way, from, keeps from tripping over them and stuff like that. Really good addition, I, I believe. Now you're ready to connect your pendant. So your pendant comes with an RC, or not RCA, it looks like a VGA cable, um, the old printer type cables. And you'll plug one end into the bottom of the pendant and the other end into the front of the controller. And that's that. Now you do want to make sure the connections are tight. Um, when Scott first got his CNC, he was having issues and I, I, I he was calling me about it, and I said, well, did you get the cables tight in there? And he's like, I think I did. And he, he took a screwdriver or something to it, got it tightened, and it fixed his problem. So you want to make sure they're tight. And that is the basic setup, initial setup, of the machine. At this point, you can turn it on and get your, your controller serial number and your pendant serial number. Go on to NextWave's website register your product and when you put those two numbers in it will give you a, an unlock code to be able to unlock your machine this is also when you would add any dust boots or anything else that you might need or you might have that you need to get installed and then you can do it any calibrations that you need to do and start cutting your first project and one of the very first projects that i would recommend on any cnc machine that you get is a spool board there are a lot of reasons for that and I will cover all those in another video, special spool board video that I'm planning on doing. Uh, but I will say this much, um, it protects your bed from getting damaged if you accidentally go too far when you're cutting. And don't ask me how I know that, I just, I know that. <laughs> so at any rate, um, yeah, you're pretty much good to go at this point. I would create your spool board and then you can sit down and start creating all kinds of really neat stuff with your CNC machine. And of course, any machine in James's shop, you know, has to have one of these bad boys. So yeah, that's about it. Um, there's, there's not much to it. It, it's, it can be time consuming, but if you have an extra set of hands to help you out, that, it helps with that. Um, I did want to show you the owner's manual again, because I don't think I got a real good shot of it in the first picture, in the beginning. Um, I wanted to show you the major difference. You see that, the color, up, color photos and illustrations and everything they did a really good job on this and i'm very glad they did this um so yeah hopefully this video helps you get started a little bit faster and get you to a point where you can actually start enjoying tech in your shop so until next time guys happy creating yeah. and no you can talk all you want i can take it out <laughs> so i shouldn't tell you to keep my wife's name no, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm so living mad. <laughs>